Heartfelt welcome to all of you. Well, I didn't really prepare for what Staffy said I would, but maybe at the end I will have some time to do so. But, well, I was told that I have to deliver a speech about sovereignty because this is the topic that we are discussing about. So I would like to say thanks for inviting me, for Miklos, Miklos Santo, and also for organizing this fantastic event. When I was preparing for my speech, what I thought was, first of all, we shouldn't speak about sovereignty, or I shouldn't speak about uh, sovereignty and the uh, uh, perspective of Hungary, but the tool of sovereignty. And then after that, I'd like to touch upon our um, point of view, our challenges and our actions in Hungarian Parliament. Well, who are the opponents of sovereignty? I think that the enemies of sovereignty are, first of all, open society and the believers of open society and the followers. We could say that they are the radical wing of globalists. Open society, this term, these two words, should evoke a fake feeling, fake sense of feeling. It sounds fake while its ideology is a colonization program. This is a concrete economical and action plan which says that it is non-violence, it's pacifist. It gives unlimited uh, uh, legal right for freedom for the uh, uh, individual and it also uh, creates or, or freedom is also available for individuals. But at the end, we will see that just the opposition, uh, opposite is happening. It draws with it war instead of speech, uh, in, instead of peace, lost rights instead of more rights, and um, giving up ourselves instead of independence. It teaches nations to give up their livability and diminish themselves. Open society is not a cultural and knowledge transfer. It's not about free trade. It's not an allied system, but it's an unarmed colonization and it wants to colonize everyone and it will stigmatize everyone who is against them as authoritarian or actually a non-human being. Open society and the consequences thereof are much more serious than the consequences of the real colonization. The old um, empires created a military order on the territory under their rule. But many times, not always, but many times, most frequently, they didn't expect the total, total cultural and social um, giving up. They um, fight it. They, they defeated those societies where they uh, arrived, but they didn't want uh, cultural homogenization. However, the woke ideology and the followers of woke have this, the following uh, suggestion. You should um, give up your solidarity, your faith, the solidarity that connects you to your smaller or bigger community. Um, waver in your family and uh, be uncertain about your identity and about your nationality and an NGO will be good f as father and mother for your children. They want individuals to believe that the national territory or sovereignty is not necessary, it has no function because there are no hardship or difficulty against which they should uh, exercise it and against which we should show ourselves as livable and as uh, strong in external dangers and problems are not treated based on uh, on national basis, but they will solve it uh, following uh, globalist uh, ideologies. And if the empire says that this is a war that is required to solve those issues, then that is what we should do. In their ideology, not the um, survival of a nation is what can protect their community and localize the conflict.
things, but this is an unnecessary bad thing which has to be ripped out. As a consequence, we need to give up on it, and in exchange, they will free us all up under all our social responsibility, and this is a pressure, this and, and under all the pressure we are facing in an open society. This is what they believe. And as opposed to this, what we believe, we think that if an individual is not a member of a strong solidarity, uh, strong community based on solidarity, then it will be vulnerable. We think that uh, an individual will never become as important anywhere else in the world than in their in its or his or her own home country. So we think that if an individual loses his or her nation uh, home country, then he or she won't be free but will be lost uh, someone who can be used for and exploit to anything because its action power is power to act is lost so we think if that whoever fights for his sovereignty is also fighting for his own security but also we think if a nation is gradually losing its sovereignty it cannot protect its members what we think is that global conflicts are threatening the security of all also those of all the, also those who could have um, be left out of that conflict. So we think that a strong sovereign nation, nations can localize wars. We think to that end, if a country does not do anything in its power to protect its sovereignty, then it fails and it can stir conflicts in its citizens, among its citizens. We think if we fail against globalists and against the believers of open society, then never ever can we uh, return to national sovereignty. To the to the stage of natural sovereignty. I think that would create problem. We will uh, reach a point of no return, and then that is a path we need to, uh, to take, because we think that the globalist change is very quick and will be not uh, redoable. So what we need to do, we have to insist to each and every bricks in the wall of our sovereignty. And concretely speaking, uh, with a new victory in June, we need to strengthen the belief in those who are thinking like to us in Europe that we can win an election while thinking in a sovereign way. way. So this is what the sovereign, sovereign, sovereign policy of the Hungarian government is about. Ladies and gentlemen, George Soros' network and their actions are bringing many problems to Hungary. I wouldn't go much detail. However, in 2022, something has happened here in Hungary that needs to be talked about. Our political opponents to, um, to, to find a solution to political problems, they uh, reached out to tools that they shouldn't have. They wanted to gain power using foreigners' money. Since 1999, this was um, there was no example to this. I could say that no one dared to do it. Even Jula Hort didn't dare to do it. And uh, the, those leftists today did it actually. And when it was find, found out, they denied it. They said that this is only these are only micro uh, donations of American NGOs. Yes, I'm pretty sure that the case in somewhere in a Texas farm, in a farm in Texas, those farmers looked at each other and thought, well, we have some spared money for Halloween in our jars. So they decided that this is the money that they should send to the leftist of Hungarian opponents so that they can um, recover democracy. Yes, you you're right to think that this is not what happened. Indeed, it was not. What happens is that the main speculants of the open society uh, actually bought the left wing of the Hungarian parliament and they sold them themselves out. When they were in government, they sold out the money of the state and now they actually sold out themselves. They are the one who are now in foreigners' hands. But we won't purchase them back. That's the difference. Maybe, maybe we will we will accept some ransom. So 
For the future, to make these kinds of things harder, we created laws because we realized that globalists won't give up. If we kick them out on the door, they will climb back through the window. They will purchase mo other people, those people who think that money is the most important thing. Today, we uh, still have some. But these people have to know that whoever they buy, any uh, fellow citizens of, Hung of Hungarian people they would buy, we will stand against them. And the national sovereignty is a renewable resource of Hungary that we won't give up on. We will fight for it up until the point when the nightmare will become a nice story where the sovereign people lived until the globalists died. Thank you very much for your kind attention.